direction No one can pull me out I'm for myself to run from the others I'm running away now I'm telling you, if that song doesn't pump you up on a Thursday yeah, night, you know what, Will? Party time with the Video Bros right here on the Video Bros Network on YouTube, on Twitch, and I believe we might even be streaming live on Facebook tonight. I'm one half of the Video Bros. You might know me. I'm Bobby Munson. And sitting right there beside me, look at that. I got the pointer thing figured out now, finally. It's my good man, the man with the angelic voice. He's Mr. Papa Smoke. How you doing, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm doing great, Munson. And how are all my wrestling people doing out there? Hopefully everybody's doing fantastic. And we got somebody joining us in the comment section already. What up, Brunch Brother? What up, Papa? Lance Anawai, I acknowledge you. Unfortunately, we don't get to acknowledge Lance Anawai here tonight due to some illness that was picked up. Uh, he was unable to join us here tonight. We will be rescheduling that program and having him on the program very, very soon. Hopefully even as early as next week, working out the details and we will get that out to you guys as soon as possible. But in the meantime and in between time, it's Thursday night. We got nothing better to do but to be right here with every single one of our fans. We're talking wrestling and tonight we're talking some fun wrestling. We got news just recently, Papa Smokes. Triple H is bringing war games to the Survivor Series. And I know a lot of people have been going on about this all week, talking about their theories regarding Survivor Series and war games. But we're going to shift that focus to talking about the history of War Games itself. And then on the second half of our double feature, when we get into the MLW side, we're going to rewind all the way back to 2003 to review a War Games match in MLW. It's a big night right here, Papa Smokes. I'm pumped. How about yourself? I'm also pumped, Munson. I'm loving it. And we're going live. Let's do this. Sure are. Get your questions in if you have any for us. And guess what, Papa Smokes? Since the last time we went live on a Thursday night, We've got something that happened. We've got ourselves a sponsor affiliate right here on the show. And I want to give a big shout out to our good friends over at Rogue Energy. We are a Rogue affiliate as of right now. You can check it right down below. That is the link you can go check out right now. If you do want to place an order, use the coupon code OLEPODS. You'll get 10% off of your order. And I'm talking about this is the energy drink of all energy drinks. Different types of flavors, brands, styles that you can get. This is the energy drink for people that are health conscious. This thing is going to pump you up without, you know, giving you the blood sugar rise that you get from the typical energy drinks you find at the store. So check out our good friends over at Rogue Energy. Man, Papa Smokes, doesn't it feel good that we finally got a sponsor here to join us? It feels great, Munson. I love hearing you do those ad reads. You sound like you can sell anything. Yeah, we got uh, Parish OLE Pods, as in Ole Pods. You got that right, Mr. Parish. And uh, yeah, so you can check out Ole 
pods as a coupon code. You'll get 10% off from our friends over at Rogue Energy, especially if you happen to be a gamer or a streamer. You know how important it is to be able to put in those long hours. So go check them out. Get your order in today. They also have free samples over there. So if you're not too sure, head on over to that link. You can see it right down below. Try out some of the free samples that they got there for you and see what you think. Hey, baby pops, folks, you can start mixing that stuff into your beer, possibly. Yeah, I'd give anything a try at this point. Anybody want to do the Olay Pod Challenge? Mr. Parrish, we don't we don't encourage that kind of behavior here on our channel. <laughs> and we got, here's Ed Fries joining us. Olay, happy to see you guys on again. We're happy to see you as well. And look who else is joining us. It's Loli joining uh, yeah. us, eh? There we go. Wonderful to see you. And again, a big part of the Prairie Pro Wrestling family herself, doing all sorts of great work behind the scenes. Often very thankless work, but you know what? Pop Smokes and I are very thankful for all the things you do for Prairie Pro Wrestling. Uh, so, yeah, speaking of Prairie Pro, we got that coming up Saturday. That's a big deal, Papa Smokes. Uh, no War Games event, but we do got that big title match between Cannonball Kelly and Sheik Akbar Shabazz. So I encourage everybody to check that out and also go check up the matches that have released on YouTube as of late, where you can hear our voices every single Saturday afternoon. And also, don't forget the grudge match between El Asesino and Colton Kelly. I have the feeling this might be one of those matches that steals the show kind of thing, too. Uh, this is going to get violent in a big hurry, and I'm looking forward to strapping on the camera and checking out this one. So Paris says the Olay pod challenge is getting super close to your microphone and proudly yell Olay. Okay, all right, because you requested it, Parrish, hooray! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it, my brunch buster brother, and you'd be catching uh, both Parrish and I every Sunday on the Chris Parrish on Twitch channel as well as on YouTube, where we give you Busting Out, the weekly review show where we talk all things professional wrestling. What a wonderful debut we had last Sunday, Pop Smokes. I know you were able to join in and catch that with us a little bit, and we'll be back this Sunday as well, too, but... Let's get down to business, Papa Smokes. We're talking about the war games. So hold on. <laughs> I made Bobby do things. Yeah, that's a that's the story of my life. Always a follower, never a leader. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we're talking about the war games, Papa Smokes. I want to go on a trip down memory lane because we love doing that here on Ring Respect. Going down memory lane quite often. And we're going to go all the way back to the inauguration of the war games matchup itself also known as the match beyond this match uh usually consists of two side-by-side -side rings encased by an entire cage and in the earlier days that cage had a roof over top of it we know that that has varied over the years with different promotions choosing to do it but this all started as an idea that sparked from the legend himself mr dusty Rhodes. yeah that's right uh in jim crockett promotions in 1987 they had a bunch of hot programs going at the same time, but the problem that Dusty uh, had before him as a booker was that he had a, a heel faction of four guys and he needed some matches for the big card coming up, but he didn't want to do them as separate matches. He wanted to have that entire faction, the four horsemen, fight as a unit. So he wanted to make a match that uh, featured... Uh, four on four and eventually five on five as some of them became later a match that had some consequence to it a gimmick match um i i heard uh, or i read it ref referred to as uh, pro wrestling's all-star game you would have the top heel faction battle the top of the card baby faces all main eventers all in a cage it's going to take two rings to hold them all in and this was another one of Dusty's uh, good ideas. See, most of them were good too. And uh, this brought everything together and uh, could uh, be the blow off match for an entire set of feuds, sometimes uh, back, uh, dating back over the entire previous year. And, you know, at the same time, these things were, you said about them being used for the matches of the Four Horsemen. Uh, generally speaking, the Four Horsemen dominated professional wrestling, and these were always the blow-off matches where the baby faces got those opportunities. But the way the match works, and again, I know most people are going to be familiar, but we'll run over it. You got two competitors that start after a coin flip decides who gets the advantage and gets the third competitor out first. Generally speaking, this tended to go to the heel side. The heel side would tend to get that advantage, allowing them to get a lot of heat on the opponents and then allowing the baby face to come in as the match beyond begins and really fire things up at, at that kickoff. Uh, so these things, brutal, bloody, 
violent and different variations of them too. The the original rules and correct me if I'm wrong, Papa Smokes. There were no pinfalls in the match beyond back when this thing was first uh, it started out. This was, I believe, by knockout or submission or give up, basically. One team had to forfeit their spot in the war games in order to lose the match. Yeah, that's right. And uh, when I said it, the, the first one was four on four, I forgot it was five on five because the four horsemen had J.J. Dillon as yeah. uh, their manager as the fifth guy. And uh, yeah, that was also quite strategic, uh, that the, uh, the the baby faces never won the coin toss because winning the coin toss really means that your team is going to be one man advantage the entire match until the, the, the match beyond the final section of the match. So that's heel territory right there. You got to have the heels outnumbering the baby faces. It just makes a better match. Sure does. And a big shout out to our good friend, Throwback978. What's up, boys? Bobby, it was an honor this past Sunday. Can't wait till next time. Keep killing it. Thanks for joining both Parrish and I oh, busting out the very first episode. Glad you were able to make it out there. And hello to not only yourself, but also to your family and the little little boy that made it on screen on Sunday there as well. You got yourself a cute little kid there, Throwback. And it was wonderful to have him join us on screen as well this past Sunday. You guys can check out the replays of that. Uh, we stream that live right here on the Video Bros Network on YouTube. It's on Chris Parrish's Twitch channel as well, too, and also on Chris Parrish's YouTube channel. So anywhere you want to find it, it can be found. It's out there for you guys, and check that out. Also check out the great work by many of our other friends that do things uh, throughout the week regarding professional wrestling and also other forms of media as well, too. Awesome content, awesome people out there, Pop Smokes. Uh, back to the war games, though. Uh, so this thing, yeah, originally in the kind of the NWA territory days is when this kind of inaugurated. But the modern fan, I think, would become more known to it in the WCW days. At least, I guess, people my age and in, in that range anyway. It became very well known as being the match that highlighted the fall brawl pay-per-views. Yeah, yeah. And that it's the perfect showcase for whatever pay-per-view you need a little bit of a bump for it it maybe doesn't have a big match or uh you want to have a big match on it as a main event every year this is a perfect thing for it it's a bit of a spectacle for the fans the two rings get put together you get the giant cage i don't, I don't know if you've ever seen a cage match live munson but uh, they'll usually have the intermission right before it and then if you're still in your seat or milling around the arena somewhere and you're just watching this cage get put together by the crew and by the ring crew it's just kind of an ominous feeling it's it's exciting it but it's kind of like uh fearful in a way too because oh my god this giant structure that they're building is just going to be the source of some wrestlers destruction in the next little while you know i think the only cage match i've actually got to witness live papa spokes was one that we <clears throat> both witnessed live during the hiw days at one of the uh, the big shows down there, I believe it was Battle Arts 4 or 5, possibly, where they first introduced the cage to HIW, and we got the opportunity to witness that live. Yeah, I remember it, too. That that was a decent cage and, and a pretty good match, too. Went uh, went well out at the Sutherland Curling Club there. Huh? Yeah, and I believe that, if I'm not mistaken, was that the same night we had Cody? No, it wasn't the same night as Cody Rhodes being there. I no. think it was the year previous, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, unfortunately, never got to see a cage match since then. Hey, who knows? Maybe something will come up one of these days. We'll get that opportunity to see another live cage match. Or who knows? Maybe we'll make our way down to one at one of these big shows one of these days, Pop Smokes. We'll bring our signs. We'll make a lot of noise, drink a lot of beer, and party with a lot of cool people out there. Now you're talking, Munson. <laughs> now, wouldn't it? I mean, it would be absolutely awesome to witness a War Games match in person. Doesn't matter who's putting it on. Uh, we got our good friend Mel joining us, gentlemen, and <laughs> calling us gentlemen. You know, I'm starting to blush here a little bit. I mean, it's not very often we get called that, Bob Spokes. Uh, I'd love to see an Elimination Chamber Wars Games match. Two rings under a bigger chamber structure. Jesus Christ, Parish Plan. That's a mouthful right there. I mean, to talk about putting a hat on top of a hat on top of a hat, it's like the three stages of cage hell right there, if you ask me. We got a uh, shout out of Cloud joining us tonight. Thank you again for joining us this week. Absolutely happy to have you and everyone there. Uh, we got metal metal wait <laughs> mess that up what Mel said oh man it's a party everybody's having fun they're either up here with us 
or maybe they've been throwing a few brewskis back, whatever your, your, your niche, niche is. You're joining us, you're partying, you're having a good time, and we're talking war games. It's, it's a good old party up in here, Pops. So here's a crazy idea. Hell in the Cells, war games. I got my tickets for Survivor Series. I can't wait. Man, you guys, you guys really like your, like, your gimmick on top of a gimmick on top of a gimmick matches. Man, it's no wonder the wrestling world is the way it is these days. <laughs> Can't we just have nice things in one gimmick? Like, geez. Anyway, uh, where were we pause, folks? I'm getting off track here. Not like us to get so far off track on a Thursday night now, is it? Um, <laughs> going over the war games. I've got some stats I wrote down, but I want to get back to those. Um, the first, I guess event or pay-per-view that the war games was used at uh was actually the great american bash prior to it ever becoming known for being at the fall brawl yeah yeah it was at the bash in 1987 and uh that's generally considered i think the best one that that's one of the ones i went back to watch in prepping for this and it is quite excellent uh, oh yeah <laughs> that one having the road warriors nikita koloff dusty Rhodes, and paul ellering versus uh four horsemen Rick Flair, Arn Anderson, Lex Luger, Tully Blanchard, and then J.J. Dillon, the, the manager in there. So already with the two managers, Ellering and Dillon, you know probably one of them is going to take the falls rather than have one of the uh, top heels or baby faces take it. But, you know, it's how they get there is, is what we want to see. Yeah, and these things, again, like brutal, bloody, violent. Uh, color was the name of the game. When it comes to the war games matchups, if you weren't showing color, you probably just weren't trying hard enough. Yeah, red means green. That's what we used to say in the business all the time, months. And red means green. Red means green. I love that, Bob Smokes. Um, let's talk for a minute because, again, on the second half of our double feature here tonight, we're going to be going back to review a war games match that took place in MLW. The war games has taken place in various promotions throughout the years, various ways, different names of calling it. In fact, even today, a variation of it is called the war chamber in MLW. We know that that is just the single ring version of the same kind of rules and, and guidelines there. But we're talking like uh, various companies. TNA Wrestling had one back in the day. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and God, it hurts me to even repeat this, that it was War, War Games, the match beyond Russo's Revenge or something along those lines. Oh, man. Yeah. Please trust me. Not not worth checking that, that one out uh, again. Yeah, I, I didn't watch that one. Yeah, Vince Russo. And not nothing against TNA or Impact, but something against Vince Russo and who he is. But uh, just not a fan. Oh, TNA Impact had some good years there. I thought uh, I was getting pretty into it in the sort of late uh, 2000s there. They had a good run. Well, you should check it out now, Papa Smokes. They got some good stuff going over on Impact. And you know what, Papa Smokes? That gives me a good opportunity to say this right now. A couple of great, great friends of ours in the form of Astrid Pizarro and Ed, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, and Cody Defoe. My apologies. I'm so used to Astrid and Ed with NXT reviews from back in the day, but I'm talking about Cody Defoe and Astrid are going to be coming out with an impact review show that's going to air on Thursday night. So we're going to be working coinciding perfectly with them. We're going to be bringing you our MLW Fusion reviews on Thursday night. You're going to be able to follow that up by heading on over to them and watching their reviews of impact from week to week. So that's going to be awesome. I mean, I can't think of a better thing to have than to have us followed up by an impact review so we can catch up on the latest of what's going in over there. Works out perfectly and just uh, another good stream of shows to put uh, back to back like that. Uh, no running late, no nothing. We can just uh, have our good shows back to back. This will be great. <laughs> and we got our friend Pastor 69. We know him. It's Ryan, our good friend that comes out to all the PPW shows, buddy of mine from work. He says he needs himself that blue Pop Smokes XL shirt. I don't know if you still got one, Papa Smokes, but you know, Ryan's asking. Well, we'll make it a surprise on Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to make it up because we're uh we're working on Saturday, and I know that. I might get a little bit of a pass to make the show on time, but hopefully Ryan gets to be as lucky. I mean, maybe I'll just have to convince the boss that Ryan has to drive me to the show or something like that. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, again, Ryan, my man, thanks for stopping by. Always appreciate it, my man. Uh, Ed coming in with, I mean, I like Impact, but can't watch it on a weekly basis, but absolutely check them out. I agree, but Ed, we know you're going to also be back streaming very, very soon with another kick-ass show. I don't want to go start giving that away right now. I allow you to drop that when the time comes, but I know that on Tuesday night that they were talking a little bit 
about uh, Astrid's new show with Cody uh, coming up. It's going to be the Impact Review show. So what does that mean for us? We've been doing these double headers right now. Pop Smokes on Thursday night. Ring Respect Radio meets MLW. I guess depending on the length of the Fusion episodes, we might still do a coinciding night, keeping it to about an hour-ish. Uh, otherwise it'll be an MLW review show and you will get ring respect radio. It will just come at you in a pre-taped format or on a different night. We will make that decision at the time, but we definitely want to make way so that we can also support our great friends and show them a lot of the love and bring them the viewers. So every single time that we finish up here, you guarantee we're going to be raiding that channel and making sure that you guys all tune in to Astrid and Cody as they review impact. And I'm curious to know what's going on over there. I mean, I'd love that people come in, take it all in uh, when it comes to hearing about MLW from us. I want to find out from a couple of experts what's going on over in impact wrestling these days. Yeah. And uh, I thought Ed had a good comment there too. Uh, I'm not sure about the whole show all the time, but I'm constantly, uh, my my attention is piqued by some of their big matches. And I, I'd like to watch more of their big matches as they come along because they have some good talent there, particularly the ladies division is pretty strong there. Sure as hell is. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Uh, we got a great question from Chris Parrish right now. The Bloodline versus the Brawling Brutes in War Games, but Drew McIntyre joins the Brutes. Thoughts on the idea? I know, Papa Smokes, you're not completely up on the WWE, but I'm sure you've heard the rumblings and stuff like that. War Games is going to be taking place. Pretty obvious to most people that the bloodline, consisting of Roman Reigns, the Usos, Solo Sokoa, and potentially Sami Zayn, as he's been, you know, in a in a uh, sorry a storyline where he's been teaming up with the bloodline and being an honorary member, could be taking on the Brawling Brutes, which I mean, this consists of Sheamus, Ridge Holland. Uh, Pete Dunn, all of were better known as Butch nowadays, I guess. And you're getting Drew McIntyre. I guess would Drew McIntyre make it a fourth, or am I missing someone on the brute side, Parrish? You're gonna have to let me know. Um, Ryan, like you say, next question on the bloodline, the new herb. You know what? We'll get to, we'll get back to that one actually after we get over Parrish's. But um, personally, the war games in that sense. You know, I get Drew McIntyre's over as hell. He's a big boy. I'd love to see him get in there. These are a lot of dudes that can really throw down. And I'm hoping that it means that they're going to go in there and give us a brutal War Games match without all the gimmicks inside of it. I would love to see them take this thing in a great War Games style, not too much overdone on bringing in the tables, the ladders, the chairs, and all the gimmicky stuff. Go in there and give us a solid, solid War Games matchup with a lot of pure wrestling inside of it. Uh, Papa Spokes, but over to you on that one. Your thoughts on it, uh, as much as you you might be up on WWE's idea here. Well, yeah, I uh, I I don't know what's going on with current WWE. Did you say Sami Zayn is with the the <laughs> Samoans, the Bloodline guys? Yeah, he's kind of inserted himself. I think it won't last forever, but it's uh, it's one of those things. But uh, it could be four v four at the same time. You could have the Brawling Brutes and Drew McIntyre versus the the authentic bloodline <laughs> minus Sami Zayn, but we'll see how it all pans out anyway. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the way it's going right now. So I'll, I'm going to throw that one back to you. And then we got a couple more questions to hit up here. Well, yeah, to my knowledge, the, didn't they uh, resurrect war games in NXT a, a few years ago with uh, sure. Adam Cole and his guys versus some other dudes. So yeah, kind of had the feeling it was going to come along every so often for them until they inserted it into uh, one of their pay-per-views permanently or something like that, but never really uh, caught on in, uh, after that, I guess. So so now we have a new one. Maybe they'll take another kick at the can. It seems like a good thing to have one, uh, annually, you know, that just pick a pay-per-view and put it on there. Granted, they already have an entire pay-per-view where every match is a cage match, so I don't know how many more cage matches they really need, but that doesn't seem to be stopping them with uh, gimmick matches constantly, so it doesn't yeah. surprise me, really. Yeah, and Paris saying Sami Zayn is killing in the role, too, and once he gets kicked out, he will be uh, super over as a baby. And you're, you're 100% right, Chris. Uh, like, it's it's quite clear that Sami Zayn is taken to the role quite well. Obviously, Triple H firmly believes in him and is going to have big things in store. Again, a lot of people speculating the inevitable tag team of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn coming around. We know their friendship. You know, those friendships tend to tend to make for good tag team partners, and I can imagine that they're going to get a good run with that tag team titles eventually there over in the WWE. Uh, but let's change over to this one. Uh, Bastard69 wanted to know, next question, are the Bloodline the new Heart Foundation? Um, 
Yes and no. I, I see where you're going with it. I mean, the faction of bringing in family all together to form a form this super group is phenomenal. It's working so well. And it's it, it's exactly how the Hart Foundation worked when it was, you know, consisting of four, five members and continued to build. And that's exactly what they're doing with the bloodline currently in WWE. They were smart to bring Solo Sokoa up from NXT, making it very obvious that this is the younger brother of the Usos. And Damn it! If he doesn't look solid in there, he's he's got some he's got some muscle behind him. He throws his stuff in nicely. I personally really like Solo Sokoa, and I think it was a nice touch adding him to the bloodline. Cool. Yeah, it seems like nowadays, uh, anytime anybody sees a wrestler that looks like he might be from the South Sea Islands or something, that's just bloodline, bloodline the whole time. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we know that those families, uh, the Anawais and the other families have done so well in wrestling that uh, if you are a member of the, one of those families, it means that's, as, that's one of the top pedigrees you can have as a wrestler. And, uh, and uh, it also means uh, that you're probably trained quite soundly as well because one of the first big wrestling schools to ever take off in the U.S. was run by Afa and Sika, the original uh, uh, wild Samoans tag team from the seventies and all that, that were managed by Lou Albano. And uh, I'm not, I can't remember where they fit on the, it on the bloodline, but they're up there high with uh, uh, as being grandpas and uncles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the bloodlines uh, kind of like the heart foundation, I guess heart foundation had a bunch of brothers in law though, too. That's what was kind of funny. Cause they had, five girls and five boys or something the the heart family so the all the girl all the boys were wrestlers and all the girls married wrestlers so they had the brothers-in-law in there too just to mix it up a little bit yeah they sure did extend that family quite uh quite deeply but we're going to jump over to ed's question here which promotion has done the war games type concept best nxt wcw mlw i gotta throw in nwa because the originators of it i'm pretty sure i i it's only a guess papa folks but i think you probably go the way of the nwa i mean if i was to go outside of the nwa i would say you know nxt yeah they use a lot of gimmicks within it but they have done a very nice job of it but there was some good wars within wcw because it did transition from the NWA and Jim Crockett promotion. So it kind of still had that original feel and concept with a lot of the same guys that really made the, the, the war games match itself, what it is today. Yeah. I got to agree with that for sure. I, I have to give the tip of the hat to the person that invented it, not the person that's doing it 30 years later kind of thing. Um, Dusty and, and in Jim Crockett promotions was, at times, a, a very creative man. Uh, he thought of the concept after seeing uh, the movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. You remember that movie, Munson, from oh, the of 80s? Of uh, <laughs> And uh, where they all battled under the dome with the roof up and everything. And, uh, you know, Death Day, he saw that one on the movie screen there. And he thought, I got to make a match out of that. <laughs> and and he went right ahead and did it. And that's the kind of interesting creativity that that is needed in wrestling. Not just doing what's happened before in wrestling, but watching movies, watching TV shows, reading books, getting ideas from different areas of culture to uh, synthesize with pro wrestling. That that's what makes the real genius, I think. So, and that 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 first one in '87 at the Great American Bash just has such fire in it too. Uh, I like that one the best of all for sure. Uh, one of the one of the best. Uh, Babyface uh, hot tags is for, or not really a tag, I guess, but his uh, Road Warrior Hawk kind of steals the show in that one, has a real big comeback and smashes some guys. That, that's quite an exciting one. I like that one a lot, but it had a lot of star power in the ring, too. Yeah, and speaking of star power, Parrish has got a really good question that ties into this. I'm just going to get this one because this is off topic, so throwback. I'm just going to throw this to you real quick here. Uh, thoughts on a possibility of three former NXT UK champions facing Braun Breaker at Halloween Havoc. Who do you think will win? I don't care whoever's in the match personally. It doesn't matter which of the other three or two or whoever the hell is in there. Don't even care the Braun Breaker's in the ring. All that matters is Ilya Dragunov's in there. He's going to slap the shit out of a whole bunch of other wrestlers, and he's going to walk out the new NXT champion. And that's all that really matters because guess what? Ilya Dragunov is freaking golden, and I can't wait to watch him become a champion again in the WWE. That's exciting. I've only seen a couple of his matches, but he looks for real to me. 
Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Ilya Dragunov back in NXT. And speaking of NXT, Chris Parrish in the comments there. Taking over on Tuesday nights, you can catch him and Astrid Pizarro on Tuesday nights as they review NXT. It is the best NXT review show that you can get. They give you all the facts, and they have a good old time. The star Astrid Pizarro, along with my brunch buster brother, Chris Parrish, every Tuesday night. Check them out. I think got uh, Parrish mentioning a uh, match will be Braun versus Dragunov versus JD. No Tyler Bate. JD was not a UK champion. Okay, see, uh, talking facts. That's what the kind of facts you'll find out on a Tuesday night on Taken Over right there. That's the kind of things you get at Taken Over, baby. You got her, Chris. That's right. And then, uh, yeah, but after Braun said he wants to face Bate. Um, sure. But anyway, either way, Braun might want to face Bate. People might want to face Bate. I don't care who faces bait. All I care about is Ilya Dragunov because I personally am a big, massive fan of that guy's work dating back even to WXW in Germany as well, too. Uh, and I think Bobby is going to be disappointed come Halloween Havoc if he thinks that Ilya is walking out champion. Then let me be disappointed. You know why I'm not going to be disappointed, Ed? Because Ilya Dragunov's in the goddamn match, and that's what matters most. Love that guy. Win or lose, I'm rooting for Ilya Dragunov all the way. Take that one straight to the bank. I don't care. Um, from there, let's get back a little bit on the war games and Chris Parrish asking who was the best war game competitor. I've got some stats that helps this out here, Pop Smokes, but then I'm going to get your personal opinion. First of all, we've got the best, most winning people inside the war games matches, 13 appearances, 13 wins. And that is both road warriors. Nice, nice. Hardly surprising, too. Yeah, only uh, second to that with 11 appearances, 11 victories, are both Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff behind them. Now, if we were going for the worst War Games records, and this uh, this might come as a shock to some of you, Ric Flair holding a record of 0 and 14 inside of the War Games, J.J. Dillon 0 and 13 and tied. For the most losses and most appearances inside a War Games match in history, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson both tied at 15. But Pop Smokes, on a personal level, who's the best War Games competitor? I uh, I kind of have to give a nod to uh, Steve Dr. Death Williams because he's in a couple of those WCW ones uh, in the late 80s and 90s. And there's one where uh, it's... I think it's Road Warriors, Steve Williams, and Midnight Express against the Freebirds and the Samoan SWAT team. The, Of course, the previous version than the one we know now. And there's a spot where they have the ring on the cage there, and it's not really all that high. And Steve Williams picks up Terry Bam Bam Gordy, who's got to be pretty close to 300 pounds, does the full military press over the head to smash Gordy's back into the top of the cage, and does 10 reps with a 300-pound man's body, which isn't as st steady as a barbell, obviously, and presses his back into it 10 times. Ah, that's one of the greatest feats of strength I've seen in a match. We had a whole uh, topic about this years ago on Ring Respect Radio, and uh, that, that's got to be up there for one of the feats of strength in a wrestling ring. Oh, for sure. And Dr. Death Steve Williams. We're going to be talking about him very shortly as well, Pop Spokes, yeah. because he uh, he happened to be in that MLW one. And I know Ed mentioned about what was the best one to kind of redo the War Games match or the War Games match in general. And I know you mentioned MLW, and we're going to be talking about that very soon, so I don't want to go into too many details. But I would say that MLW, with the <clears throat> recreation as the War Chamber, has done an excellent job. I've really enjoyed the couple of War Chamber matches that they brought to the fold. We're going to get to that War Games match right, right away here. And they were very heavily focused on adding those additional gimmicks because they were still very much in that phase of trying to be the next ECW or at least bringing people that ECW flavor that they weren't getting when it was bought out by the WWE. So very going to be going to be a very interesting topic to talk about but as much as we love MLW if you're putting the war game stamp on it i would say they're out of the running for you know at the top of the list but if you start to add in the war chamber which is only the single ring version there's a little bit of a little bit of a argument to be made there about the way they're handling it now papa smokes cuz those two war game chamber matches we've watched and reviewed they've been spot on i've loved them and our boy Tristan Ty kicking ass in both those things for sure, for sure. 
And uh, even the the one that we're about to review, I thought was pretty good. It looked like one of the old ones from the '80s, like that. That that's kind of the way they set it up and booked it, I think. But uh, more on that in a bit. Yeah. So Parrish wants to know what would your ultimate dream war game match be? You pick the participants and the company. Uh, so I mean, I guess this could go just about any direction, Bob. So I'm sure we've seen. Uh, seen what the uh the old-fashioned ones could do and who could be in those things and everything like that but ultimately you really want something that's that's got that tension between two sides something that really drives it home a reason for two sides to compete and i mean if you're trying to do that in a modern aspect what direction do you go without you know picking the obviously like the direction they're currently going in wwe right now unless you start to get into the whole booking between two different separate companies or something like that I personally think if you're going to do it with modern day uh, wrestlers, I would love to see a war games match maybe take place between two siding, uh, two different uh, companies, maybe MLW versus impact wrestling and have two sides uh, of the coin on over there. And can you imagine having a guy like Davey Richards on one side of the ring for MLW and then having his former tag team partner, Eddie Edwards on the opposing side for impact wrestling. I mean, you start to throw in names like, Alex Kane, Alexander Hammerstone, Jacob fought too. I mean, you've got some real beasts over on that side, but man, you've got some kick ass wrestlers over on the side of impact wrestling as well, too. I think that you could have a real collision on real true war games between those two companies. Oh, for sure. And just continuing on that one too, we got a tiny taste of that this summer watching Ric Flair's retirement match and uh, that Jacob Fatu versus Impact champion Josh Alexander had some real mustard to it. That was a good match, man, and and two hard-hitting, real tough-ass guys. And uh, I, I would take more of that anytime. Yeah, I got to imagine Josh Alexander on the side of Impact. Like, I mean, if anyone's going to take it to Team MLW, I'd be worried seeing Josh Alexander across the across the ring there. So that, I think, is the direction I'd like to go. Is there anything you would do differently, Pop Smokes? Yeah, I just – the thing about dream matches is that there's no – you can't build it up beforehand. Like, there isn't a situation that starts. You just pick the combatants at random kind of thing. So I find it hard to do – um, but I know I like your idea of doing a cross promotional thing too, as long as it's a dream match, I suppose, then you don't have to obey any of the rules of business that would prohibit that in the first place. Uh, yeah, you could get all kinds of stuff going. Uh, I, I tend to think of things not in terms of the large companies, but I like, uh, the, the smaller companies, but, uh, oh, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. I, I would probably pick mine from the past from guys that are dead and retired and all that. If I, if I had time to sit down and think about it. Yeah. If only we could get Hackenschmidt and Gotch inside the work. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Let's throw, throw Stu Hart in there while we're at it. But uh, we got Parrish mentioning that he would do the Hart Foundation consisting of Brett Owen, the Bulldog and Brian Pillman versus DX in Billy Gunn, Road Dog, Triple H and HBK. Well, I, why not make it five on five there, Parrish? You could throw in uh, X Pac, I believe, was a DX guy. You could throw him on the S side of DX, and then uh, you could get uh, Jim the Admiral Neidhart into the Hard Foundation where he rightfully belongs as well, too. Uh, just, just a thought. And then uh, we got Throwback, the Nation of Domination versus the Ministry of Dark. Again, a lot that could have been done back in the late 90s with the amount of factions there were, but that, that was a sign of the times in the late 90s. I mean, factions, it was, it was the thing. I mean, you could make an argument for the team of evolution when they came out and the amount of people that you could have put up against them, especially when they were riding high and having all the titles over in the dub. I mean, easily you could have thrown a war games match together then if the opportunity would have uh, presented itself at the time. And factions became a fad. They were, you know, a fashion in wrestling or whatever, but you have to admit they've stuck around because every, uh, every, promotion has a, a faction at least uh, and usually more than that yeah exactly but yeah that's uh that is war games in a uh steel cage nutshell if, if you ask me um anything else that you want to add to this uh this commentary pop smokes but in regards to the war games before we give everybody a short break to get ready for fusion yeah no not really but this will just bleed nicely into our next conversation about uh 
the funk and army versus the extreme horsemen and the, the, this was kind of a good time and this is some of the mlw the early years that i've been wanting to watch more of yeah exactly so as that that brings us to an end here on ring respect radio side of things we're going to be taking a short couple minute break go get your next beer go take a quick bathroom break get yourself ready come on back we're going to be doing a little bit of mlw reviewing for you on the edition of fusion if you're catching these replays on youtube they will be separated you'll be able to find that episode of fusion on our channel so go check that out but in the meantime and in between time that's ring respect radio we'll be back in two minutes with fusion See you soon.